Hello everyone. Today we will have a phone review. Yes, you heard right. But this is not an ordinary phone. It's a phone I would say for tech enthusiasts with cool features. Something I've wanted for a long time. This is my debut smartphone review. And I'll try to make it informative and to the point. I ask you to leave feedback in the comments. I don't plan to do smartphone reviews in the future. But if interesting gadgets come along and you want them, why not? So meet the Blackview BL9000 Pro. Yes, this is a rugged phone, the flagship model of Blackview as of spring 2025. Rugged phones with colossal battery capacity no longer surprise anyone, as many manufacturers have been making them for a long time. Power banks with smartphone functionality, having batteries of 10, 15, 20, and even 30 amp hours are no longer news. I never understood the point of such high capacity batteries as it's much more convenient to have a slim smartphone that's easy to use and a power bank of any capacity you want. But our Chinese friends know better. Our smartphone is equipped with an 8,800 milliamp power battery, making it a brick weighing 415 grams. But unlike most of its counterparts, which come with low power chargers, this monster comes with a gone charger of up to 120 watts, which charges the battery in 50. To 60 minutes. And that's really cool. The package includes the smartphone itself, the charger, and a very thick Type C slash Type C cable. While most rugged phones have rather mediocre components, this monster has quite decent hardware. The display is IPS but very solid with good viewing angles. It's huge 6.78 inches. Next to it, the 15th Pro Max looks like a baby, even though the latter is quite a bulky phone. A large display is, of course, great for watching movies, for example, but it's incredibly inconvenient for other tasks. Even considering my rather large hands, using it with one hand is impossible. My fingers simply aren't long enough for comfortable use. But even if you try to do it, your hand will get tired after a few minutes. This is where the massive weight of the smartphone comes into play. The smartphone looks solid. The dimensions are right in front of you now. Of course, it's bulky and heavy, but that's thanks to the abundance of metal used here. The main body of the smartphone is rubberized. The advantage is that it doesn't need a case. There are metal inserts and buttons on the sides. At the top left is the SIM card tray. The phone supports two physical SIM cards. Under the tray is a programmable button, on the other side is the volume rocker, and below it is the button with the fingerprint scanner. This is a very fast scanner that works lightning fast. At the bottom, there's a USB Type-C 3.0 port protected by a cover. There are speaker grills at the bottom and top. The acoustics here are not anything but Hartman slash Cardin. Next, there's the camera block and a flashlight with two LEDs. We'll talk about all of this a little later. Regarding protection, this is a rugged phone, and its armor is appropriate. IP68, IP69, mills at 8 to an H. Let me decode that. IP68 indicates that the phone has maximum protection against dust. In general, it is dustproof. It can be submerged in water, usually up to one and a half meters or more, for up to 30 minutes depending on the manufacturer. IP69 is complete protection against dust. Maximum level of water resistance, protection against high temperature water jets under high pressure. For example, in theory, the smartphone can be washed with a steam cleaner, and it will be fine. But I wouldn't recommend testing its durability. MLSTD, 810H military standard, and American military protection standard. The letter H indicates the most modern version of this standard from the year 2020. It is stricter than the previous ones. If a product meets this standard, it means it is not afraid of strong and rapid temperature changes, shocks, and vibrations, drops, humidity, and dust, thin air typical of mountainous regions and is also insensitive to solar radiation. In general, on paper, it's indestructible. The display has a resolution of 1080 by 2460 pixels, Full HD+, as previously noted on a 6.78 inch screen. And yes, they included a 120 hertz display, which makes it very smooth and easy on the eyes when watching action videos and playing games. Since the smartphone is rugged, 
The display is protected by Real Gorilla Glass 7 Victus. The capacitive multi-touch is very responsive and supports use with gloves. For connectivity, it features Wi-Fi 6 2.4 and 5 GHz, Bluetooth 5.1, and supports 5G. Navigation is also great, GPS plus GLONASS plus, Beto, and Galileo, and there's also NFC. The RAM is 12 GB, which is quite substantial, with the possibility of expansion up to 24 gigs using the main memory. But we know this marketing, so let's not dwell on it. The memory type is LPDDR4X, with the main flash memory being 512 GB, which is also quite good. The graphics are Mali G77MC9 up to 836 MHz. The main processor is an octa-core, manufactured by TSMC using a 6 nanometer process. This is the MediaTek Dimensity A20. It has four Cortex-A78 cores at a frequency of 2.6 GHz, plus four Cortex-A55 cores at 2 GHz. This is a quite good and balanced processor for mid-range smartphones. Overall, it can support more high-end hardware up to a 144 Hz display, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and possibly in a future update of this smartphone, it will have the same processor. If the folks at Blackview don't decide to use a display with a higher resolution, as it only supports Full HD+. Cameras. The smartphone is equipped with four cameras, not counting the dream of many tech enthusiasts, the FLIR thermal imaging camera, but more on that later. About the main cameras, a 15-megapixel Samsung Isis L, Gen 5, sensor with an f1.8 aperture. And the coolest part is that it has optical image stabilization, so the video won't be shaky. They gave optical stabilization, but deprived it of 60 frames per second in 4K mode, which is unfortunate. But 60 frames per second is in Full HD mode. The camera is a solid mid-ranger. By rugged phone standards, you could even say it's decent. But if you compare it with top-tier expensive cameras, it falls short significantly, which is not surprising. We also have a 13-megapixel ultra-wide and a macro lens with a 120-degree field of view, capable of shooting from a distance of up to 2 centimeters, which is also not bad. The front camera is also 15 megapixels, with an SK Hynix 5022Q sensor. Aperture, f2.45, supports video recording up to 4K resolution. These are examples of photos from the main camera. These are photos from the front camera. Here are video samples, 4K at 30 frames per second, using the main 15 megapixel sensor. Example video in 4K with the front camera. And finally, we've reached the cherry on top, the thermal imager from FLIR. Probably, an average user doesn't need to know this, but we are tech enthusiasts. We need to. FLIR should not be confused with Fluke. It is FLIR Systems, now known as Teledyne FLIR, an American company specializing in the development and production of thermal imaging cameras, infrared sensors, and night vision systems. The leading manufacturer in this industry, and the most recognizable. Overall, Teledyne is the largest American industrial conglomerate, owning multiple subsidiaries, including FLIR, LaCroix, and dozens of other popular companies. About the characteristics of the thermal imager. Lapton 3.5, 160 by 120 pixels with a 57 degree angle, pixel size 12 micrometers, frame rate of 8.7 frames per second, and yes it's slow, but you won't be using this device to shoot the same action. This is a thermal imager. To be fair, I should note that there are mobile thermal imagers on the market with 30 and even 50, 60 frames, but the decent ones are quite expensive. And here the thermal imager is integrated into the smartphone itself, which has powerful hardware. A separate application is dedicated to it called MyFlir. What I liked here is that the thermal imager can work together with the camera and the influence of the camera is adjustable. These are the shots we get purely from the thermal imager and these are from the combined operation. You can also turn off the thermal imager and leave just the camera. Here we can turn the flashlight on or off, set a timer before shooting, adjust the image, set the unit of measurement, geolocation, and perform auto calibration of the sensor. There are many operating modes. You can set points where you need to know the temperature. You can highlight an area where you need to know the average temperature. Moreover, the previously mentioned points will work within these areas as well. There is also a thermal scale showing the minimum and maximum temperature. And all of this can work either separately or together all at once. 
All of this can be reset or saved, and you can take both photos and videos. The thermal imager sensor has an automatic shutter, and as I understand it, it is also used for auto calibration. There are nine modes for displaying the thermal image, and everyone will find something to their liking. You can do slow motion recording, and there's even the option to start a live stream on YouTube. The question is why? The answer is likely to be, because we can. Well, all right, they did a good job. It's precisely because of the thermal imager that I've been eyeing such a smartphone for a long time. As for the rest, there are a bunch of standard Android apps that are already installed. By the way, there's also an FM radio. There's also a set of tools. You've got a compass, altimeter, sound level meter, protractor, barometer, wall level, magnifying glass, and plumb line. And that's not counting various emergency apps and a flashlight. Of course, some of this is available in any similar smartphone. Regarding games, until recently I didn't play games at all. For me, it all ended with the third Mortal Kombat on the Sega in the 90s. And when I turned 30, I got into retro gaming on Spectrum clones for a while. I'm saying this because I don't know which games are trendy now, and what is best to test on smartphones. So I downloaded Tanks and gave the smartphone to my son for testing. After a couple of hours, the kid made an observation. At maximum settings, there were no lags observed in the first few dozen minutes. Then after about an hour, the game occasionally started to lag, and there was a decrease in FPS from time to time. The not-so-powerful hardware affects performance for such tasks, especially if playing on Mac settings. The phone has a maximum performance mode, and during these tests, this mode was activated. In games, it performs confidently if not playing on Mac settings. In everything else, the phone is very fast. But the maximum performance mode literally drains the battery. Yes, the smartphone has a very large battery, but in this mode it will last a day at best. If you turn off this mode, two to three days are easily achievable for an average user. But there's one nuanced geolocation and background modes also consume quite a bit. Plus the huge display. However, if you enable the power saving mode and turn off everything unnecessary, it will last a long time. Towards the end, I ran the phone through the N2 to benchmark, and it scores around 800,000 points, which is an excellent result for a rugged smartphone. I repeat, for a rugged one, this is on par with the iPhone 12, Samsung Galaxy S21, and Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. I would like to say a few words about the charging separately. It's clear that it supports a bunch of protocols. Power Delivery 3.1 is also supported. The maximum we can get is 20 volts at a current of up to 6 amps, which is exactly 120 watts. And in fact, these 120 watts were actually achieved on an electronic load. The phone is also capable of charging using the full potential of the charger. However, the power input will regularly change, sometimes increasing, sometimes decreasing. But indeed, the smartphone charges quickly. In the end, perhaps it's worth adding a couple of words from myself. For about half a month, I've been using only the smartphone to properly evaluate it. The only significant drawback is perhaps not so much its size as its weight. Your hand really gets tired, and it needs support to hold this monster. When buying it, you must be ready to accept that this is not a phone for everyday use. It's inconvenient to use. After using this smartphone for even five minutes, any other smartphone feels weightless and toy-like in your hand. I completely understand that powerful protection and a large battery can't weigh little. That's a given. Therefore, the phone is worth getting if you have an active lifestyle, frequent hikes, extreme activities, and so on. That's exactly what it's designed for. I recommend this phone as a second device or if you really need a good thermal imager in a phone with powerful, albeit not top-tier, hardware. While the review has come to an end, I hope it was informative. Please support the author with kind words or constructive criticism, share the video with friends, and subscribe to the channel. That's all from me. See you next time.